Good evening, Assalamu Alaikum, and welcome to Sports Extra. I'm your host, Ahmed Nawaz. Tonight, we're going to be starting things off. Let's give you the lineup that we've got for tonight with all the latest round of sports. We'll be starting off with cricket, and in cricket, the big news tonight. The headline is that Mohammed Hafiz, all round of a Pakistan cricket team, has announced his retirement after 18 years of playing for Pakistan in all different formats. Uh, Professor, more commonly known, uh, 18 years of a career, more than uh, 12,780 runs to be precise, 392 wickets for Pakistan, has called it curtains on his career. It's thank you, Mohammed Afiz, for his outstanding service for Pakistan. He has served Pakistan cricket as a captain, as an all-rounder, whether you talk about opening the batting, coming in the middle order, coming down the order, opening the bowling, being a devastating uh, you know, hand against the left-handers. Uh, he's been superb. But the way he has exited Pakistan cricket uh, is a professional is graceful is the word to be precise about it and I think a lot of credit goes to Hafiz PCB as well the way that they have made sure that he says goodbye to Pakistan cricket in a dignified manner I think that speaks volumes of how things should proceed and that's what happens when you have a cricketer at the helm of affairs they understand the sentiments involved they understand the emotions involved they understand the respect that needs to be given to the cricketer because at the end of the day Pakistan cricket board is always about cricketers and cricket it's not just business it's about the cricketers as I said so I think uh, thank you Mohammed Hafiz we'll be taking a look at his illustrious career and also the timing of uh, him saying goodbye and also the fact that players uh, you know senior players need to um, understand need to know when it's time to say goodbye and make way for the youth as well and uh, after that we'll be moving on to another segment that we've got we will be talking about the English Premier League in the English Premier League uh, of course it was Chelsea and Liverpool who were held to a draw to all the scoreline after that we had the City overtaking Arsenal uh, but uh, Gunners held strong uh, City once again taking the league by storm as they've always done in the past few weeks uh, then we had other games as well with West Ham, Everton, you know, many other teams. But tonight is the big showdown where Manchester United takes on Wolves. So, you know, Ragnick needs to get the monkey off his back as well. So we'll be talking about the English Premier League in detail uh, regarding the fact, like I said, that there are certain things that need to be addressed as well. After that, we'll be talking about uh, the National Football League, NFL. And it's big news once again there as Brady stars as Bucks have overcome the Jets. But... The news has been taken away from the game because it was Antonio Brown who stormed off mid-game he, and he's no longer a buck anymore. That was said by Bruce Arians. So we'll be discussing that because I think um, Antonio uh, Brown is really a character when it comes to NFL. So we'll be discussing in detail of what the saga was and why did he say goodbye on the middle of the pitch as well. All about that in tonight's show. Uh, time now to introduce our guests on Sports Extra. First of all, we've been joined by cre uh, cricket commentator. Uh, she's a senior cricket analyst and has a very keen eye on the game itself and really loves the game. I think more than anyone that you see around, she is none other than the legendary Lina Moin Aziz. Assalamu alaikum, Lina. Welcome to Sports Extra. Wa alaikum salam, Ahmed. I hope you guys are well and uh, you know, always great to be here. Great to have you on the show, Lina. It's, uh, it's been quite a while. And we've also been joined by our sports expert, K. Asif. Asif, assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Sports Extra. Wa alaikum assalam, Ahmed. Thank you very much. Great to have you as well. Right, Lina, first of all, um, the professor has called it a day for international cricket. Uh, do you, first of all, believe that uh, right thing to do, right timing when you understand you're no longer in the plans uh, for Pakistan cricket in the future? And like I said, that an exit in a dignified manner staying away from any controversial things. Absolutely. I mean, he's been a fantastic servant for Pakistan cricket. He's had his ups and downs, um, you know, but uh, if you, as, as analysts, we've talked about him when he's had his ups and when he's had his downs. Obviously, when he's had his uh, downs, we, we criticize him. But even in criticism, uh, personally, if you remember, I've always said that there's no one in the world who times the ball better than Mohammed Afiz when he's playing on the offside. The ball travels like it's on, going on velvet, so smooth, so silky. And then, you know, this flick, uh, the easy, uh, nicely timed flick and, you know, straight uh, shot over the bowler's head or mid-off mid -off's head for six. All these shots and the deft touches, they will always be remembered. And then his bowling to the left-handers, so line and length, tight and always looking for a wicket and so dangerous against the left hand. So he's been a unique player for Pakistan and he served Pakistan with a lot of problem and a lot of uh, dignity. So salute to him first of all. And then the second part of your question, is this the right time to go? Yes, it is. Because Pakistan 
uh, now has young players like Abdullah Shafi, Saud Shakil, Heather, who and many more who could fill in potentially fill in, fill in uh, Hafiz's boots. So absolutely the right time to go, right way to go. And he's uh, been a great servant to Pakistan cricket. Has won many matches for us, uh, for us for uh, 32. 32 man of the matches, Ahmed, and nine man of the series. Over 12,000 runs in all across all formats. So a brilliant servant for Pakistan cricket. And once again, another salute to him. But the right time took time to go, definitely, I'd say. Definitely, like like we say, right time to go. Uh, K. Asif, your thoughts on. Uh, the retirement from international cricket announced by Mohammad Hafiz and also the fact that we now have a younger lot that can obviously fill in the shoes. Well, this is the important point. It's a uh, sigh of relief for the youngsters now. And to be very honest, that uh, you know that I remain all the time really critic about Mohammad Hafiz. But the good thing is that uh, at last he has decided to say goodbye now. And uh, the, the way he go the, the way he uh, took this decision, it, it's uh, definitely remarkable because. Uh, in Pakistan, nobody leaves this place. So the way he said that uh, it's the time for the retirement, I'm happy. But uh, uh, to be very honest, if you talk about last uh, one-day World Cup 2019 in England, if you see 2015 in uh, Australia, New Zealand, and, uh, the, uh, and earlier on in 2011 in India, so there won't be any remarkable performances from Mohammad Hafiz. So I don't think so that uh, 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 he had uh, served in the way, the way... Uh, we the Pakistan required. So uh, I have a, a slight different opinion concerning this. Hafiz, uh, uh, yeah, he was okay. He was an average player for Pakistan. So I'm happy now. This is the time for youngsters to come and uh, fill his place and come, uh, fill his place in remarkable play, uh, way. Asif, do you think that this is also a, now a message probably to other seniors as well that maybe it's time now that they say goodbye to Pakistan cricket in a dignified manner because we obviously have to look to the future now. Ahmed, when you say the other seniors, why don't you take their names? Are you talking about Shweb Malik? I've got Shweb Malik. I have Azhar Ali. Uh, <laughs> I probably have some other up my sleeves as well, which I yes, might not yes, want to say right you. now on live television, but two no, in no, particular. No. Thank you very much, gentlemen, that you're taking their names, to be very honest. Yes, this is the time to other seniors to learn the message that enough is enough there. You have played enough cricket for Pakistan in your in your career. Twenty um, in Pakistan, let's see the twenty years. Most of the time, when you start your career, it's seventeen, eighteen years of age, and when you're retiring, it's uh, forty. It does not happen anywhere in the world. You talk about England, what happens? You talk about Australia in their cricket. So uh, the early on, 30, 33, 34, 35 is the maximum age, and they say goodbye and they they, they leave the place for the youngsters. So yes, this is the time for Azhar Ali and Shweb Malik. And I think Shweb Malik is concentrating for the upcoming T20 World Cup in Australia as well. But I don't think so that uh, that would be a nice idea. So I think they should follow the path of Mohammad Afiz. Right, K. Asif, thank you so much for joining us on Sports Extra. That was our sports expert, K. Asif. Uh, now, Lena, uh, one particular question that I, I see after, obviously, Hafiz's exit is that, uh, uh, like I say, that this might be now a way where PCB has finally figured out, the way we have seen this exit, that the players deserve a lot of respect. They deserve to be taken care of in a dignified manner. And no matter how many personal likings or dislikings a person might have with one another, when it comes to professional matters at the helm of affairs, Ramiz Raja is truly setting an example. Because like I said, the way gracefully he's exited from the PCB headquarters with a press conference is an example of how future should follow this suit as well. Absolutely. I mean, uh, things have to be done in a right way. Players have to be respected. Uh, they've given so much service to Pakistan cricket. They're given years and years of their life to Pakistan cricket. And I don't agree about the age bracket. There is no age bracket. It's all about your fitness and form. If you're in good form and your and your fitness is good, you can continue even till 43. There's a, a Meera Baksha stand in uh, Pinty Stadium. And that gentleman was playing. Uh, I think he played his... Uh, Tape, uh, up to 50s or something. The point is that your form has to be great and your fitness has to be great. And, you know, players like um, uh, Malik and Hafiz, uh, they had a lot more potential. They didn't fulfill it the way they, uh, they, they could, should have. But then they had great careers. You know, 32 man of the matches is not a small feat. Nine man of the series. So, fine, we, we understand that, you know, 
uh, Hafiz did have drips in form uh, every now and then. But when he came to the party, he really came to the party. Then that is why he has those 32 men of the matches. I mean, come on, 32 men of the matches. I've been a big criti critic of Hafiz. You know that. But I'm not going to be unfair to him. Nine man of the series, 12,000 runs. I mean, fantastic. Uh, but he could have, I mean, if he, he was a more consistent player, maybe he could have 18,000 runs uh, and, you know, uh, much more or 17, 18,000 runs. But he, in his capacity, he's been a great servant to, Pakistan's, uh, to Pakistan cricket. And the way he exited, we have to uh, play, uh, give a credit to Ramiz Raja and his re regime that he's giving respect to players. And the right message is being sent that, okay, it's nine, now time for youngsters to come and fill maybe Malik's boots also, and maybe in time Azhar Ali's uh, uh, boots also, but in the right manner. These players have given their life to Pakistan cricket. So I, I appreciate Ramiz Raja, the way he's handled this Hafiz uh, um, scenario, and I'm sure he's going to handle other scenarios well also. But in the end, we've got to understand uh, that, you know, some of the innings Hafiz played, that innings in the 2017 Champions Trophy, I mean, and some of the other innings, the way he... He's gotten players like Gale out, completely bamboozled them, and many left-handers. I mean, his service is tremendous. Yes, once again, he could have been more consistent, but once again, he's been a great servant of Pakistan cricket, a graceful uh, man, always handled himself great, really beautifully on the field, and has always given his 100%. That's another matter that he didn't achieve what he should have with the kind of talent he has. But then he's done great for Pakistan. And I, I'm against putting age brackets on people and brackets and, you know, all these uh, all this nonsense on people. I don't like brackets anyway, Lena. So I'll, I'll stick with you on this one. <laughs> but but uh, Lena, to be uh, to be precise now, do you think this will now have an effect where now the younger lot will feel that their places in the side are, are there now? But at the same time, do you think what needs to be done on another part of the management is that make sure that whichever youngster takes the position at number three, four or five, whoever it may be, needs to be given a consistent chance, needs to be given the confidence that you will be part of our team, just stick to your natural abilities. Absolutely. I mean, players like Abdullah Shafiq, Heather, uh, Saud Shakil, these players are three batsmen I'd like to talk a lot about. Then there's some, you know, there's uh, Nasser Nawaz and there's Sahib Zada Farhan, players like that playing in the uh, domestic uh, there's another guy, Tayyip Tahir. Such players, whenever they're given a chance, they need, need to be given a, a bigger, longer go. And they need to be feel, uh, made to feel confident and comfortable in the team. And uh, the captain management has to let them know that, look, you know, we're giving you a chance. It's not going to be one or two matches, but a couple of series. And just relax and give your best. Just not think about getting dropped if you don't perform in one match. So let them know that they're there for the long haul which is two, three series. And that will definitely make players, uh, you know, relax them and they'll be able to perform better. Pakistan, I've seen in the last, uh, because I was closely involved uh, as a commentator in the last season, mm -hmm. uh, this current season and the domestic season also. So we've got a lot of talent, both in all three departments, spill, fast bowling and batsman. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. When a player enters international cricket, he needs to be given a certain confidence. And the main thing that has to be said to him is that, you know, you got two, three series. Don't worry about one or two series. If you don't make runs or you don't take wickets, go ahead. You're here for a couple of uh, series at least. Definitely, they are. They are. Well, Lina Moinaziz, thank you so much for joining us on Sports Extra. Time now to take Anytime. a look at our segment recap of this segment. And in the segment recap, of course, we have been discussing that the professor has called it curtains on his international career. He's played 55 test matches, 218 ODIs of Pakistan, and 119 T20 internationals. Man of the match many times, man of the series many times. He said he will continue to play franchise cricket, but more than 18 years of service to Pakistan cricket. And uh, we've got, uh, you know, more stuff as well when we talk about Hafiz because we've got the fact that more than 12,780 runs, 392 wickets, a lot more about Hafiz. Uh, we'll bring you a very special report on him as well. But right after this short break, stay tuned to Sports Extra.
uh, we're back on Sports Extra, and like we just told you that, uh, thank you, Professor. Hashtag thank you, Professor, has got to be the hashtag. You know, a lot of credit to Mohammed Hafiz for 18 years of service to Pakistan cricket. And let's just go see a look, um, uh, you know, at, at this report that highlights his career overall and his services to Pakistan. The top order batter and off spinner Mohammed Hafiz has announced retirement from international cricket. The versatile batsman, who is known for his phenomenal batting and aggressive shots, announced retirement from the Test cricket earlier in December 2018. His remarkable career spanned for more than 18 years with the green shirts. He started playing for Pakistan in 2003. The former Pakistani skipper played to 18 one day internationals, 119 T20 internationals, and 55 tests while amassing 12,000. 780 runs across formats with 32 player of the match awards it's the fourth highest among pakistan players in all international cricket hafiz's overall t20 international record as a captain stands at 18 wins one via one over eliminator and 11 losses from 29 matches he was earlier dropped from the t20 international side in 2018 and was recalled in 2020 for the home series against bangladesh and ended the year with being the top scorer in the format that year the star player also bowled handy offspin for most part of his career. Also known as the Professor, he signed up with Lahore Kalanders for the upcoming edition of the country's flagship league PSL and confirmed that he would continue to be available for franchise teams around the world. There you have it. All you need to know about the Professor and his career spanning 18 long years for Pakistan which includes more than 12,000 runs, 392 wickets. So thank you, Mohammed Hafiz, for your services to Pakistan and all the best, obviously, for your future endeavours, as he said that he will continue to play franchise cricket. Time now for our segment of football. And in football, we'll be discussing the English Premier League. To discuss that, in studios, we've been joined by our sports expert and football youth coach, Sabil Hazir. Assalamu alaikum. How are you, sir? Mehmed. I'm very well. Thank you again for having me. Good to have you on the show. I've heard you've missed me a lot. So we guess 2022 <laughs> is going to be... Better, and I'm going to be joining more. But that, uh, that being said, we've got a report on the Premier League. Let's go take a look and then me and Sabil will have a go at it. Manchester City took another giant stride towards retaining the Premier League title with a controversial 2-1 win against 10-man Arsenal. City were on the ropes, but Rodri's dramatic injury time winner heaped the pressure on Chelsea and Liverpool ahead of their clash at Stamford Bridge. Those two chasers didn't disappoint, throwing everything they had at each other but in the end, their thrilling matchup ended in a 2-2 draw. Chelsea manager Thomas Tuchel dropped record signing Romelu Lukaku from his squad after a controversial interview in which he expressed discontent with his current situation. Lukaku said that he was not happy with his bit part role under Tuchel earlier this season. German boss addressed that Lukaku is our player, there is always a way back and we will clear this behind closed doors. Chelsea came from two goals down to earn a draw with Liverpool in a Stamford Bridge Classic, a result that only strengthens Manchester City's stranglehold on the Premier League title race. City are 10 points clear at the top of the Premier League table from Chelsea. Liverpool do have a game in hand but currently sit a further point behind. The Premier League in detail, all the action that you need to know about. Now, Sabil, first of all, Manchester City and Arsenal. We knew City is going to dominate, but you've got to give credit to Arsenal because the way they held on, instead of conceding like five, six goals, which I personally expected, Arsenal did a lot better than many teams who have faced City this season. Yeah, so when we went into this game, I think we expected City to dominate and score quite a lot of goals because Arsenal are obviously... Not that Arsenal have been... They've picked up form and they're playing quite well, but City are obviously the much better team. But um, full credit to Arsenal, I think they were the better team playing. Uh, Arteta has Pep's, I won't say he has Pep's number, but he does have something on Pep Guardiola because he obviously didn't start off his first face-to-face -face with Guardiola, didn't go off that well. But after that FA Cup win that he orchestrated, he does seem to have figured out how to press against Guardiola teams, win the ball back and actually keep possession against them and beat their press. And you saw that a lot. They were dominant throughout. I think they were very unlucky. Martinelli missing that open goal was crucial because <laughs> within that space of time, they got a red card, they missed a goal, and they conceded a goal. So a lot, bad luck. Yeah, just chaos, right? <laughs> bad luck and chaos. So you have to feel for Arsenal. I think they were the better team on the night. But this is what you call championship form. We spoke about this when Chelsea uh, won the Champions League the first time. We've spoken about it a lot of times when teams seem to be grinding out results playing their worst football as well. Now, City have been playing amazing football, but on a day where they didn't play that well, they were by far the second best team, 
they still ground out a result. It's that when stuff like that happens that you know a team is going to win the league because even when they play their worst football, they get three points. Arsenal, I feel bad for them in that top four race. They needed a win and they, des- they I wouldn't mm. say deserved it. If you lose, you deserve to lose. But they deserve something out of that game more than a 2-1 loss, maybe a yeah. draw. But um, full credit to City and they have run away with the league now. They've run away. I think what, uh, you know, something that further signifies that City are now runaway leaders is the fact that Liverpool and Chelsea both went for a draw. Just goes mm. to tell me that both of these teams are no longer in contention anymore, to be very frank. Yeah, uh, that was the result City wanted. They wanted a 1-1 draw. Oh, sorry, not a 1, just a draw of any kind, be it 1-1, 2-2, 0-0, yeah. whatever it was they wanted a draw. They wanted one point each. Liverpool now, with the, even I think they have a game in hand still, even if they win that, they're about 8 points or so behind. Their mm. Chelsea are about 10 points behind um, City now with the same games played. So, this was, one of them needed to win. One of them needed to win that game so that there was at least a chance. The issue is now, we'll get out to Lukaku in a bit, I'm yeah, sure, yeah. but before, let's not talk about him right now, let's talk about the other aspects. They both have depleted squads, Liverpool and Chelsea. Obviously, Liverpool are missing Matip, Alisson, Firmino, uh, probably a couple of others who I've missed. Chelsea are missing half their midfield. They've got Kante back. They've got players coming in, but they both are depleted squads at the moment. You... City, even when they're depleted, have top, top players coming in. So Chelsea and Liverpool, by any stretch, do have great squads. But compared to City, they do seem to be lacking when a core player does go missing. For example, City can, even if they lose Mahrez to the African Cup of Nations, they can find a player to fill that gap. It's only going to get worse for Liverpool when Mane and Salah head off with the Absolutely. African Cup of Nations. And which they will. Which they yeah. will. And Chelsea, they're, always, they're just seeming to have something go wrong every week. So I think they've both... It was a fun game, mind you, for a neutral. Amazing game to watch. A lot of fun. Really exciting. The first half, as poor it was defensively, was one of the most exciting halves this season. Mm -hmm. But they've both really messed up an opportunity here. And City now, I don't see anybody catching City with this lead. If you'll agree with me here as well, I think when Pep gets a lead like this, even a five-point lead is too much to give Pep Guardiola. Mm -hmm. This is ten points. You can't do anything. Even if you give sides two extra games, I don't think they'll be able to match that pace. But, you know, with Chelsea, um, with Tuchel, uh, to be precise, it's like he's the wolf of Wall Street now. You know, he goes on uh, on a fairy tale run like a billionaire, wins the season, wins every trophy that he's intended to as soon as he comes and takes charge, then starts well on the Premier League on top, then things start to deteriorate, and the cherry on top to add to his problems and woes, there comes in Lukaku. It's... So you're talking about his woes already. They were top of the table, threw that away. Obviously, they had injuries and COVID problems, but that went away. And the last thing they needed they wanted. was... We were all happy Lukaku's coming back after, <laughs> you know, a spell off. He's got a goal as soon as he came back. It seemed like he's going to pick off right where he started. And then he goes, gives an interview, apparently without his agent's knowledge, his team's knowledge. He just tells nobody, he goes to Sky Italia and tells them, you know what, I wanted to go to Bayern or Real Madrid. Neither of whom will take him, by the way, because they have Benzema and Lewandowski. Yeah. But... Uh, he's like, I wanted to um, go there and I came by Chelsea and I, wa- I wish I was still at Inter. It's like, Inter don't want you. you, yeah. you That's you, why they let you go. Yeah. The fans don't want you back at Inter. They've uh, been putting up motifs and things all over saying they do not want you coming back. Uh, the management has made it very clear that with Dzeko, they're getting goals. They might, they're probably going to win another league title. They don't need you. So why would he go give this interview? It's just given problems to his club right now. I hope whatever meeting happens between Tuchel and the management and him, I think it was today that meeting was supposed to take place, resolves whatever issues there are because he was left out of that squad. He would have made a big difference there. Mm. And I don't get why he's doing this. He's, he can have a big impact at Chelsea. It's very I unlikely. I mean, the guy that- on an interview said that the water at Inter tastes better than that at Chelsea. How much sense does that make? No, this jelly doesn't make sense because the clubs that you... Uh, ostensibly want to play for Bayern and Real Madrid, even Inter. None of these three teams, in my opinion, would take you. Right? How about he goes for free to Barcelona? That might work. They've taken <laughs> uh, maybe. I don't see him going to Barcelona. They've just got. Uh, they don't Ferran have Torres. the money. He doesn't have the temperament what? anymore. Might connect. Uh, well, they've got Torres now <laughs> as well coming in, and 55 million on Torres. Where did that come from? That's another story. Uh, Tuchel really has a problem on his hand now because Werner's out. Mm. Lukaku can't be played. Um, they really need to sort that out. And January is here. Do they sell him and buy a player? They need to sort it out ASAP, which I'm sure they're doing. And it was really good of him and bold of him to leave Lukaku out of the squad. Well, it might be a bit off our lineup tonight, but because it's a game that we, we have, uh, it's United taking on the Wolves. Uh, mm-hmm. Ragnik really needs to get the monkey on his back. And I don't say this as a United player. I say this as a football mm-hmm. analyst that maybe it's time that, you know, he starts doing something special for United. So I think the promising thing for United fans such as yourself is 
when initially he wasn't scoring more than a goal a game, his team, yeah. they scored three in their last Yeah, game. that's so done. <laughs> they've picked <laughs> up pace. Surprisingly, McTominay does seem to be looking to fit into that midfield role a little bit more. Ronaldo is, uh, as always, Ronaldo getting involved <laughs> in things. The defensive issues are still there. Harry Maguire is, I don't, like St. Max on the Newcastle draw 1-1 one, one, was eating him. They were, he's getting <laughs> ripped to shreds. So there's still, I can't blame Ragnik for that, but he has January now. So when you're talking about him getting the monkey off his back, now is the time, Ragnik, make a few small tweaks, sell a few players or bring in a couple of players on whatever kind of conditions you want and make things work. I do think against Wolves, considering the form Wolves are a bit shaky at the moment, I feel like United should win this game. Uh, there are rumours that he might try to get rid of some players in January. And I mean some players that it's not just that they fit into his plans, he just doesn't like them. It's plain simple. But about mm -hmm. Maguire particularly, you know, be very honest, do you think he fits into the system right now? No. They need a ball-playing centre-half and Harry Maguire is somebody who tries very hard to be that. But when he does ball-playing, it's him running into traffic with the ball and then freaking out and kicking it away. And I genuinely, I say this about Maguire as well, I, uh, about him all the time. I feel bad because if for a regular price tag he was bought, he'd be a great addition to the squad. Yeah. It's because he was the captain and most expensive defender and all these things. And he's nowhere near that level to be a United captain. Guess what's the signing that can only beat his insane signing? What, what, what's that been in the Premier League? What this season? Think? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm sure you're hinting at something. If you Jack could. Grealish. Jack, <laughs> <laughs> but Grealish is still going to win the league. <laughs> yeah. Harry Maguire will not. So it's still far more <laughs> worth it. Well, definitely, you know, the fun and games will continue. But overall, we do know. And I think both of us over here agree. And I think the fans would as well. That City are now the leaders of this league. And the runaway leaders. I think that 10-point lead is just too much. Let's take a look at our segment recap for this segment of the English Premier League. That was football. And we, of course, discussed the English Premier League in detail. We discussed that Manchester City is now 10 points ahead of number two place Chelsea. And that does mean that they're runaway leaders. Uh, they won against Arsenal, uh, while Chelsea and Liverpool were held to a draw. And, uh, of course, Lukaku was dropped from the squad. He's got some problems growing as well. And Tuchel, obviously, is addressing the Lukaku issue with the management and everything coming in as well. But on that note, we'll stick to football. But we'll change the dynamics of football because from the English Premier League, we're going to move on to the NFL now. And we've got a report on that about what's been happening. Let's go take a look and then come back. Tampa Bay Buccaneers made a comeback with a win over New York Jets in the recent NFL game. However, there was something else that made the game much more peculiar. Tampa Bay field ever. This was after Tampa Bay's offense in midst of the third quarter drive against the New York Jets. Immediately after Bucks win at the MetLife Stadium, Bucks head coach Bruce Arians told the media that the 33-year-old receiver, who has a long controversial history, was no longer with the team. It was less than a half decade ago that Brown was considered the best wide receiver in the game. In fact, the former late-round pick from the Central Michigan was on pace to break multiple career records. Brown, a one-time Super Bowl champion, led the NFL in reception twice. Entering Sunday's game, he had made 925 catches for 12,265 yards and 83 touchdowns. However, now it can be expected that he's out of the NFL for good. Brown has drawn attention for all the wrong reasons at the end stage of the 2021 NFL season, which has resulted in his abrupt release from the team. With a checkered history that included off-the-field issues with the Steelers and tenures with the Bills, Raiders and Patriots that were derailed by his antics, this release was much expected. His career includes a litany of legal troubles, movement from team to team, suspension, history, and more. Most recently, he also violated COVID policy by misrepresenting his vaccination status as well. With this, Brown's brilliance as a pass catcher has been offset by a string of incidents away from the field as well as declining performances on it. Well, what a start to the new year for the Buccaneers and Brown as well. So, Bill, my man, what's going on? It's insanity. <laughs> it's genuine insanity. I, that is to be expected with Antonio Brown. I'm not a fan of the guy. Uh, I think he is an amazing, by the way, amazing, amazing wide receiver. Uh, nobody can doubt that at the start of his career. I even think up until 2019, he was exceptional at what he does. I still think he's good. He's not in that top tier category anymore, but he's still very good, especially for a wide receiver at second. So uh, WR2, he's still very good at that uh, for that position to be the backup. But what you saw here is just another incident, probably the most bizarre one in a litany of incidences and charges. This is a man who's faced... Uh, What's it called? Uh, he's been uh, found guilty on convictions of battery. 
He's faced allegations of uh, misconduct, domestic violence. There are a lot of issues that he's faced yeah. off the field. Drunk driving. Drunk driving. I think he actually, I'm laughing because it's just insane to say, but did he forge his like COVID vaccination status? Well, he that? did. And That's I don't, 10 points to you. <laughs> I don't get what goes through a person's <laughs> mind that they think this is an issue. Now, in fair play to Tom Brady for two reasons. Yeah. Firstly, GOAT. He rescued that True. game. Uh, rescued that game. Um, and we can talk about the match itself and how brilliant he was. And kept the attention to the game yeah. as well. Yeah. That's so important. credit to him. But the second thing is he comes out and like a leader, he says, look, this guy has mental health issues and we wish him the best. He hopes he, we hope he gets the, uh, the help he deserves. Now, in my opinion, yes, people have these issues and we need to help them as a community, as a society. But there's also no excuse for somebody behaving terribly over a decade and wasting away so much talent. But he's not, it's not an ordinary person wasting his life and it's not like a person who's got no skill level. Mm -hmm. You know, for crying out loud, you won the Super Bowl. You've been the best wide receiver when we talk about this and we heard in that report as well. You could have been the greatest player for the NFL or for the Buccaneers at least for the next couple of seasons. But So it's interesting because I'll touch on that point first. Um, the coach Arian said that um, this when he signed Brown, that we're literally only bringing him in because of injuries. We do not want him here. He's coming. Cause we, and that's, by the way, not because he's a bad player. He may not be the same player he was in 2019, 18, 17, all those mm. years. But still good. He's, he, the numbers they expect of him aren't what you'd expect from Antonio Brown. But by any wide receiver standards, especially a backup, they're good uh, numbers to expect. Yeah. That being said, he said one mistake and he's out. And fair play to him, he's kept it. So he drew the line first. He drew the line. Yeah. He said one mistake, he's out. The COVID one, that was almost it, by the way. He was very close to the exit door then. And now after this, I like how he came and said, look, he's no longer a buck. That's it. It's finished. He's done. Yeah. Now, Antonio Brown's done. As a player, you're talking about a waste of talent. This guy's been to seven Pro Bowls. He read, uh, sorry, he read, he led for receptions, leading yards for like two years. So he's had an amazing career. He's been one of the best wide receivers in the right. league for three or four years, not mm. just a couple. And even now... He was, by the way, close to a million dollar bonus if he had just gotten, I think, a few more yards, a touchdown, and some receiving passes. So this is a man who has all the talent and skill, even at age 33 or 34, whatever he is, he still has a skill, especially to be a backup wide receiver. He could be the best backup wide receiver in the league, but he chooses to behave like this, and he doesn't get minutes. He's been axed uh, from a team, I think it was the Patriots, yeah. where he played one game and he was out. So there's no point in having a player like this. So he's going to play games for you and he's collecting million dollar paychecks. So good riddance to not bad rubbish. He was a very good player. But, <laughs> but, paid but, to do that. but Brown will be Brown. So you can never change Brown, can you? Yeah. But Sabeel Azri, thank you so much for thank joining you. us on Sports Extra. Time now to look, uh, take a look at our segment recap for NFL. And in our NFL segment recap, we'll be telling you that we talked about uh, the National Football League and we talked about that Brady has rescued the Buccaneers and he did rescue them. Let's be very honest about it. But Antonio Brown's exit was the highlight of that game and of the NFL so far as well. Brown has a history of controversy. We discussed about that. Sabil gave you the list of offenses that he's been through as well. And also the fact that Arian also said that, you know, he's done with Brown. It's over. So that, that's, that's the case with NFL. But on that note, from me and the entire team, we'll catch you tomorrow once again. It's goodbye for now.